Welcome to News Desk on SiliconANGLE TV for Friday, September 28th, 2012. I'm Kristen Folletti. Yesterday, well-known developer behind the cult classic game Minecraft tweeted to the world that he'd rather have Minecraft not run at, on Windows 8 at all than to play along. Microsoft pundits around the blogosphere have noted the hypocrisy of such a statement given the wide variety of walled gardens and closed platforms Minecraft has been adapted to already. Is Notch correct when he says Microsoft seeks to destroy its open platform? Here to help us find answers is Minecraft addict and SiliconANGLE founding editor Mark Risen Hopkins. Welcome, Mark. Howdy. So, first of all, tell us who is this Notch character and why does the world seem to care so much about his opinion of Windows 8? So, I've, I've torn myself away from my Minecraft game long enough to do this interview here. Uh, so, actually, a uh, so, little backstory. Uh, Notch, uh, Marcus Notch, Harrison Notch is his online name. Uh, Kind of like I've got one, I guess, and uh, he has been. He's one. He's he's well known for having done the bulk of the heavy lifting in developing a, a, a very popular game. Started out very underground. Now it's sort of mainstream. Called uh, Minecraft. It's uh, in a sentence. Minecraft is is like Legos, where you're being chased by like zombies and creepers and other kinds of monsters that want to kill you at nighttime. But uh, at any rate, it's, it's a it's a Wildly addictive game. Um, I, I dare say half the uh, uh, production staff has played it, and most of us find it uh, uh, pretty pretty fun, um, if not outright addictive. And uh, it's basically it's it's elevated him uh, notch to somewhat of like a cult celebrity status uh, within the gaming world uh, because of you know the amount of time that he put into it, how he did it outside of the. Uh, traditional structures of the uh, gaming industry kind of did it all as an indie game that went wildly popular. And, uh, you know, it, it is these things combined that kind of give his, you know, even flippant statements about uh, the state of uh, general purpose computing uh, so much weight. So what are the general, what's the reasoning behind his statements? So uh, this all kind of, uh, it, you, you've got to be kind of a Windows insider to, uh, or maybe you don't at this point, but to, to understand what he's talking about. Uh, Windows 8 is going to drastically, at least attempt to drastically change the way we view desktop computing and put it more in line with uh, how we view uh, tablet computing and other forms of mobile computing uh, and even living room computing. Uh, they're changing the primary interface to Windows to something that's been called Metro UI, uh, although they, Windows has stopped calling it Metro UI, just call it the, the new interface for Windows 8. Um, but if you've ever played on an Xbox or if you've seen the Windows Phone 7 um, or Windows Phone 8s, it's that tile-based interface, uh, different colored tiles, that uh, is going to be the primary way to access uh, the operating system for Windows as opposed to the traditional start menu uh, lower taskbar based system that you see on uh, everything going back to Windows 95. So is Notch alone in his beliefs about Microsoft or are there others who are also opposed to the Windows 8 model? So there are uh, other people that agree with him. Uh, I had to kind of dig around to figure out uh, on which side uh, most of the industry falls and it, to me, this was all very puzzling because uh, Windows or Microsoft from, from very early on has said that while well, Metro UI is the default interface, it's not the only interface for Windows and you can disable it uh, and go to the more traditional start menu based system. And this was done mostly to appease the uh, uh, done mostly to appease like the enterprise consumers that are the primary audience for the Windows operating system who, who Microsoft is trying to make sure is happy. But, uh, you know, looking back to the gaming world, which Notch is a part of, uh, you've got uh, Valve that has said some things uh, against uh, the new Metro UI certification process. And you've also got uh, a fellow by the name of Brad Wardell, who is the CEO of a company called Stardock, who has been very vocal in his opposition to the new Windows 8 interface, which... Um, personally, I find very puzzling because part of Stardust's claim to fame is putting wildly uh, creative uh, interfaces on traditional operating systems. So since Notch is so highly opposed to this 
interface, uh, could he possibly remove Minecraft or block it from running on Windows 8? I, I don't think that that's going to be the case, uh, purely because of how Windows 8 is going to work and how Minecraft works. Minecraft uh, is written kind of on a Java framework, which is, you know, the claim to fame is totally cross-platform compatible uh, on, on a variety of stuff. Um, uh, and also Windows. Windows is notorious for making things legacy compatible. That's one of the uh, the the hallmarks of the system. And What's really at issue here is not whether or not Minecraft will or will not work in Windows 8. It's whether or not it's going to be certified to work within the Metro UI, um, which does, amongst a number of things, certification lets it work within this kind of weird tiled uh, interface and also lets it be listed in the official Microsoft App Store. According to a recent poll, more than half of Windows 8 users prefer Windows 7, uh, mostly because of fear of price and compatibility compatibility issues. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that's because of fear tactics? Uh, yeah, I think that that has to play a part. And, and I, I was talking about this with someone else this morning. This this happens every time a new Windows comes out, and, and rightfully so to a certain extent. I mean, Windows is the most popular operating system on the planet, and change is scary. I mean, just on a human level, change is scary. So uh, if you look back to like Windows 95, there were fears about the command line being uh, completely made uh, obsolete and not being available. And so much of technicians' uh, expertise was built on being able to zip around in a command line and fix a computer quickly. Uh, Windows uh, XP and uh, Vista had similar kind of uh, DRM-ish like anti-piracy uh, features that were supposedly built into the operating system that well-known pundits were spreading around as uh, as if this was going to be the death knell for open platform computing. So price being one of the major fears, it, do you feel the price point for the Windows 8 is fair or overpriced? It, it it's Everything's going to boil out to what the market can bear. The upgrade price for existing Windows 7 users, licensed Windows 7 users, is 20 bucks for the upgrade to Windows 8. I, I don't know anybody that has a computer which that can't afford that upgrade price. Uh, and then uh, beyond that, I mean, th there's, there's always going to be like these outlandish enterprise per seat prices and then, you know, the, the low priced student uh, license that's, you know, 50 bucks or 60 bucks or something like that. So it, 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 there, there should not be a legitimate fear that prices will be an issue for Windows 8. I think everything will kind of come out in the wash. So you mentioned, you know, change being sort of a, a fear factor for many of the users. What are some of the features that you feel users will welcome or some of the features that users are going to be hesitant to accept? So here's where I think um, Windows 8 is really going to shine. And this is this comes from having uh, just come back from the Intel Developer Forum a few weeks ago. Uh, and Intel Developer Forum, as John said yesterday on our on the program, uh, is, is a, kind of a a bellwether for what's two years out in the in the PC business. Uh, they they show technology there earlier than any other tech show there is because they're so far ahead with the Moore's Law and whatnot. Uh, and the striking thing that I noticed there at IDF was the fact that there were no PCs on display that didn't have touchscreens. Uh, if you looked at a laptop, it was a laptop that turned into a tablet and had a touchscreen. Or if you looked at a desktop machine, it was a desktop machine that had a touchscreen interface um, as the primary driver uh, for interaction uh, as opposed to a mouse. Still had a keyboard, but it was a touchscreen. So when Metro UI is engineered to be a tablet or living room uh, operating system first and then a desktop second, but the, the desktop and laptop business is recognizing the fact that this is where we're going, so let's let's shift the paradigm a little bit on how we want our users to access our computers. So Microsoft claiming that Windows 8 is going to be the first version of Windows to be designed for both tablets and desktops is to make, you know, basically it easier for users to switch between interfaces. Is that something users are excited about or something that can also cause more headaches for users? So there was a, there was a piece in the register today um, and uh, I, I from an unnamed uh, Intel source, and uh, there was a, there's been some rumblings in kind of the uh, the IDG IDC Info World type publication saying, look, you know, uh, this is not uh, 
this is not something consumers are excited about, but it's also it's also also something that you really have to uh, you have to try it out to understand why this is a at least a comfortable, if not better, user experience. Much like what people said about the iPad, you know. I mean, I I, I was one of those people that listen to all of my Apple nut friends talking about, okay, Mark, you just don't understand what makes the iPad so special. If you had one in your hand, you, you get it. Right. And, and I'm, I'm on the, the shoes on the other foot. Now I've had a chance to play with desktop and laptop machines that uh, use Metro UI well. And I understand how it is a, a comfortable computing experience in ways that, you know, the general public doesn't understand yet because they haven't seen it. They haven't been exposed to it. So whether or not the the public will take to it, I mean, I think it's a roll of the dice that Microsoft's willing to gamble with. Well, Mark, we appreciate you joining us today, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Keep up to date with the latest in tech innovation by joining us daily at NewsDesk on SiliconANGLE TV.